Hello again, and welcome back to the Midnight Spook Show with your humble host and guide for all things macabre, Hellhound. <laughs> I just reviewed uh, Alone in the Dark, so uh, check that video out if you haven't already. I figured I'd have time for maybe one more review tonight, and I figured I'd take a look at uh, The House on Sorority Row, uh, yet another early 80s slasher film, and a uh, pretty good one. Um, yeah, I only have this on... Uh, VHS. I haven't quite made the upgrade to uh, DVD or Blu-ray yet, so um, <laughs> I, mean, I love that old, uh, look at that old Vestron lo video logo. Freaking love Vestron video. That was their original logo too before they changed it. Yeah, oh yeah. It's just... Video cassette goodness. Mmm, even smells like an old video store. <laughs> I know, I'm weird. Alright, anyway, um, The House on Sorority Row. Uh, the main story is that uh, seven sisters pull a prank on their strict house mother, uh, Mrs. Slater, played by Lois Kelso Hunt, I believe is her name. Um, they throw her cane in the dirty pool and uh, force her to re retrieve it at gunpoint. Now, um, Vicky, played by Aline Davidson, uh, the one holding the gun, um, it, it's, it is, uh, well, it's supposed to be loaded with blanks, but um, she accidentally shoots and kills Miss Slater, uh, who falls into the pool. Um, or, or she's already in the pool, and she's, you know, shot, and, um, and so, you know, the seven sisters, you know, they, they freak out, they don't know what to do, they, you know, they're gonna call the cops, what do they do, um, you know, they decide to hide the body until, you know, graduation's finished, um, and so, you know, they got Catherine, uh, played by Kate McNeil, uh, she's kind of the main character, and the other girls, and, you know, they, they freak out, and then, but soon, uh, they find themselves being picked off one by one by a, uh, unseen assailant that's uh, murdering them. Did somebody witness uh, Miss Slater being killed? Uh, is Miss Slater back from the dead or never really died in doing the killing? Or is it one of the girls who has guilt and wants revenge? Who's killing them all? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a mystery. It's a whodunit. Um, but I think it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, they give clues throughout the movie as the identity of the killer. I think it's a very interesting way they did it. And uh, once you realize who the killer is, I think it's um, pretty, pretty shocking and pretty... Um, Pretty intricate, uh, very very cool actually. I, I like the I like the direction they went in with that. I liked uh, I liked uh, who it turned out was the killer in this. I thought that was a pretty cool uh, addition. Um, so um, so yeah, um, yeah. This is a, this is a pretty good movie. Um, so, you know, another early '80s slasher. This is one of the better ones, I suppose. Um, you know, it's not too great. You know, it's pretty typical. You know, it's got a body count. You know, it's got people killed off one by one. Um, you know, some scenes of nudity and. Um, you know, some violence, you know, there's not really a huge compelling story, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's one of the various, um, you know, movie, slasher movies where like, they accidentally kill someone and then they feel guilt and try to cover it up and then somebody kills them. It's like, you know, Prom Night, or I Know What You Did Last Summer, or, you know, one of those. Um, and, you know, Miss Slater was definitely a bitch, you know, I, I, you know, she was definitely very mean-spirited and cruel, so you, you kind of cheered, uh, for her to get her just deserves, but at the same time, kind of felt bad for her, too. Um, you kind of feel like it's justified, because these girls are like, they're, they're not innocent, you know, they're all kind of guilty, they're all there, um, you know, they're all part of it, you know, and, uh, you know, some of them, you know, some of them do feel, like, legitimately remorseful, um, but, you know, so yeah, they become killed in, uh, gruesome ways, and, you know, and, but unknown killer, so yeah, it's, it's that old story, you know, nothing, nothing too real original, or, or uh, fresh, or, or news, but, um, but I think this movie does it pretty well, you know, plays all the same, you know, tropes and cliches, but it, it, it does them, you know, in, in, in a generally fair manner, um, you know, I thought that, you know, Kate, um, Kate McNeil's character, Catherine in particular, was pretty likable, and, you know, I wanted to see her, um, come through, um, I think she was also in Monkey Shines, uh, that movie Monkey Shines, it was directed by, uh, George A. Romero, and, uh, like a killer monkey, uh, <laughs> So, um, so, there's a fun fact, um, but anyway, um, yeah, pretty good movie, I'd say check it out, um, yeah, as I said, once you, uh, when to see the killer is, and the character of Dr. Beck, he, uh, he, um, comes on the scene, and he has a strange connection with Miss Slater, and there's a mysterious backstory, and a whole motivation, so I think you'll be pretty invested in that story, you want to see who the killer is, and why, and how Dr., you know, what Dr. Beck's connection is to it, there's actually a point, a point where he, uh, actually kidnaps somebody and lures them, uh, lures the killer to them using them as bait, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, I thought that was interesting, uh, something I haven't really seen, you know, in too many movies do before, at least ones that came out before this, um, 
So yeah, just got a you know, surprise ending, you know, something you won't see coming. And kind of a strange way of dispatching the villain, too. Um, you know, so, uh, I guess I won't give it away. There, there's a little more I'd like to say, but I, you know, if I did, I'd have to spoil it for you, and, you know, I don't want to do that. Um, even, even, uh, <laughs> even if I warn you, a lot of people still watch my, uh, watch my whole video and, and end up being spoiled and like, oh, I shouldn't have watched it, you know, like with April Fool's Day, people watched, you know, the ending and, of my video, you know, and I spoiled it for them, they, they said, oh, I shouldn't have watched it, but I did anyway. So I won't, I won't even mention it this time, just in case you're, you're compelled continue watching <laughs> it's really late at night i'm kind of rambling i guess i'm like getting tired or something but anyway um yeah i suggest you check out this movie um yeah it's pretty good uh you know it was uh, remade uh, not too long ago as just simply sorority row i don't really consider that a remake uh, it just has a similar title really i mean you could you could call you know any horror movie that um and I didn't think that was, you know, all that good. I didn't think it was terrible. Um, you know, it was a lot different, you know, who the killer was and the motivations and, the, the you know, this, um, leading up to it. It really doesn't share anything in common with the original movie other than somebody's accidentally killed and then, you know, somebody saw it or somebody, you know, was there and, you know, now they're killing the other sorority sisters, um, you know. But uh, it's not, you know, it's not unwatchable. It's not ungodly. It's not one of the worst remakes I've seen. But I'd say, I'd say mostly skip it. Um, aside some, from some, you know, some funny scenes, I thought it was kind of like humorous. Actually, it's not, yeah, definitely not, um, not something I recommend. But I would recommend. I highly suggest you see the original. Um, very decent slasher film. Um, again, it doesn't really have anything too new or interesting. But a, a few things, you know, the, the accidental death. Um, it was done. It's been done a couple times before, but. That was handled pretty well here, and, uh, and then of course a great villain, and um, once they reveal the identity of said villain, um, I thought that was very powerful stuff, and uh, very um, captivating. I was captivated when I watched this movie, when I was wanting to figure out who the villain was, and as to the why, and who the mysterious Dr. Beck is, and what the opening scene actually meant. Um, you know, there's, a, there's a prologue, and it doesn't really make much sense until you've watched the entire movie. Um... But anyway, um, well, I guess that about does it, yeah, um, it's pretty, some pretty bad acting, some pretty stupid decisions the characters make, but some pretty, uh, good kills, some few good scenes of suspense, um, some, some, some likable leads, uh, memorable villain, um, you know, a great twist, and, um, some interesting, uh, some pretty inspired twists and turns, and, you know, some shocking moments that you probably didn't see coming, so, uh, I'd say the slasher film was enough, has enough to offer, for you to see, I give it maybe a very high seven out of ten, almost an eight. Um, who knows? Uh, maybe a maybe a low eight. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's a good eight slasher flick. Um, but yeah, go check it out. Um, I really need to get this on DVD or Blu-ray. And um, but for now, I'll just be watching my uh, VHS copy until then. A little Vestron video, oh, love it. Hi right, guys, well, uh, thank you for watching. Um, Hellhound's Midnight Spook Show. It's part of the Horror and Metal channel. And, um... Until we meet again, let's uh, discuss some great horror films. Um, not sure what I'm going to review next, but uh, you guys will be the first to know. Alright. Peace.